Ureteral Stenting for Pelvic Surgeons, a collaborative effort between University Hospitals, Cleveland Medical Center, and Metro Health Medical Center. Pelvic surgery has an intricate relationship with the urinary tract. Pelvic surgeons need to have basic knowledge of urologic principles such as ureteral stenting and the prevention and diagnosis of urinary tract injuries. The purpose of this video is to use common surgical scenarios to demonstrate techniques for ureteral stenting. Scenario number one, preoperative ureteral stenting. Patient is a 40-year-old G2P2 with a history of endometriosis requiring multiple previous laparoscopic excisions who presents for TLH-BSO. The surgeon decides to place ureteral stents preoperatively to help in the intraoperative identification of the ureter. The components necessary to perform this task include a 30-degree 21 French cystoscope with a blue nipple, a sensor wire, and one or two five French open-ended catheters. To perform preoperative ureteral stenting, a small funnel is inserted through the blue nipple to aid in the introduction of catheters. The blue sensor guide wire with the black soft tip as the leading edge is threaded through the scope which is introduced into the bladder. The blue sensor wire is threaded until resistance is appreciated, indicating that the wire is near the renal calyx. A 5 French open-ended catheter is then introduced over the blue sensor guide wire until resistance is appreciated. Note the demarcations of the 5 French catheter that indicate how far it has traveled. Once the open-ended is threaded until resistance is appreciated, the underlying sensor wire is removed while holding the open-ended in place. The open-ended is then gently pushed forward as the cystoscope is withdrawn. Once at the urethral meatus, the open-ended is secured, the cystoscope is removed and placed to the side. To secure the stent to the Foley catheter, a small hole is made at the opening of the Foley and the catheter is introduced into the bladder. The open-ended is then placed into the Foley as shown and later secured with a silk tie. A urimeter is then attached to the end of the catheter. In the case that both ureters are stented, both can be threaded through the small hole made at the edge of the foley and secured with a silk tie. In the case that stents are removed at the end of the procedure, they are pulled out through the urethra one at a time. Care is taken to note that all demarcations are present on the open-ended catheter. This is a precaution that aids in the identification of a possible ureteral transection. Scenario number two, use of retrograde pyelography to identify a possible ureteral injury. Patient underwent a TLH complicated by a right broad ligament fibroid requiring ureteral lysis. On cystoscopy, there was no jet from the right ureteral orifice. A stent was placed without evidence of obstruction. Decision is made for a retrograde pyelography. The components necessary to perform this task include all those from the first scenario, in addition to a C-arm for the x-ray and optoray contrast dye. The cystoscope is introduced into the bladder and the 5 French open-ended catheter is introduced through the blue nipple. The open-ended is threaded just past the ureteral orifice of the affected ureter approximately 1 to 2 centimeters approximately. The Opteray syringe is then attached to the open-ended catheter, withdrawn, and dye is injected. With the dye up the ureter, x-ray images are obtained to identify the injury. In the third scenario, ureteral stents are placed at the end of surgery after extensive ureteral lysis. The patient is a 35-year-old G3 P3 who underwent extensive ureteral lysis for stage 4 endometriosis. Electrosurgery was used intraoperatively. There is concern about the right ureter. Retrograde pyelography is normal. The surgeon decided to place ureteral stents and remove them on an outpatient basis. The components necessary to accomplish this task are all those required for retrograde pyelography with the addition of a double J stent. 
There are different sizes of double J stents based on the height of the patient. We use a 6 by 22 stent in this demonstration. With the sensor wire and open-ended catheter previously inserted for the procedure, the open-ended catheter is removed over the sensor wire and the double J stent is threaded over it as seen in the video. This is done with the assistance of the C arm. When threading the double J stent, care must be taken not to push its distal curl into the ureteral orifice with the orange stent pusher. Once the stent pusher is visible cystoscopically, the sensor wire is removed, allowing the double J curls to curl inside the kidney and the bladder. The stent pusher is then removed as well. Radiography is used to verify double J stent placement. When the double J stent has a string attached to one end for outpatient removal, care must be taken to separate the outer sheath of the cystoscope from the camera followed by removal of the outer sheath itself. This string is gently pulled for outpatient removal of the stent. In conclusion, this presentation describes techniques for ureteral stenting and common scenarios when they may be used in pelvic surgery.